Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Developer Live uh, AI and ML for your enterprise event. This is a bonus session for demystifying Oracle Machine Learning and Oracle Analytics Cloud for agility of your organization. My name is Philippe Lyons, and I am part of the product management group of Oracle Analytics. And I'm going to be using the next 30, 40 minutes to talk to you about this. And since there's a tight timing, and this is a developer audience in particular, so I figured we could cut short of some of the first slides and go right away into a demo. In fact, I would like to take an example of an analyst user who is using Oracle Analytics to blend some machine learning insights into analytics. So for this, I'm going to go right away in my next demo. This is the UI of Oracle Analytics, where I have on the left here my data set in different columns. And I'm just selecting columns here to build some visualization. And the system automatically build, brings up the right uh, visualization and allows me with a right click to simply build some statistical analysis and trend lines. I can drag all sorts of different columns into my canvas here, slicing and dicing by other dimensions. I can pick visualization among a variety of different visualizations here. There are many different ones. It's very easy. It's almost fun for me to just go and get insights from my data. I can organize this very easily. This is the visualization aspect of OAC. All of these visualization come by default with interactiveness between each other, which allows me to understand when I click on a bar, what the other charts filter by this bar, what are the insights control or, or driving other insights. I can easily change the hierarchy levels like I'm doing here from months to quarter and see aggregated data. Basically, I have a lot of flexibility here to simply build visualizations directly and, and get insights out of the data, at least get into some discovery of this data. But my interest here is not so much to show you how we can make visualizations with OAC. I would like to apply some machine learning on that sales data that we're looking at. This is my sales data and my sales historical data. And I have built a machine learning model in OAC, and I will show you this in a minute, in a few minutes, but I would like to consume that machine learning model right there in the context of the visualization that I'm using. So for this, OAC allows users to simply bring into their analysis a machine learning calculation, which we call a scenario. So I'm going to create a scenario here. And when I create a scenario, <clears throat> I can see a list of machine learning models that are popping up here. So I can see I have filtered on cell named machine learning models, and I can see a few that I have built a little earlier on this. So if let me select one on logical regression um, that I built earlier on, and that adds a new column into my data set, which is a calculation, not a pre-built calculation, but a calculation is going on on the fly as I'm drying, dragging it on the canvas. So this is computing a machine learning algorithm on the whole detail of my data and aggregating it in my visualization. So for me as an analyst, that's very useful. So uh, I can obviously drag that column into different charts and see the results of that the logistic reg uh, linear regression uh, calculation by distinct dimension. But every time the whole calculation is happening, you know, I can easily enrich my visualizations by comparing this with another machine learning model and comparing the results of different models. So I built a visualization and I'm dragging calculations of different machine learning models on the fly. Again, these are not pre-computed, they're not batched. They're happening on the fly based on the context of the data that I'm using. And the, obviously the data that we're looking at may not be exactly the same that was used for the training. That's the point. Now I see a red line and a yellow line and the red one is the cart prediction and the yellow one is the linear regression prediction. And you know, just as I did earlier on, I can slice and dice these details to get some insights as to 
which one is predicting better or higher or lower than the other one in different contexts. So then I can go and simply have some fun by slicing this by product category and let's slice it also by ship mode, for instance. So I drag this in my visualization. Then I can understand that, oh, one model is predicting high into a context while the other one is predicting low. So as an analyst, Within a few minutes here, I was able to apply machine learning model on my own data set, compare them, and understand which one is doing better. But what I'm also interested in to OAC is give me a little bit more information about that CART model. What is its metadata? So I just navigated in the CART model model that somebody has built. And here I have some quality information, some detailed information about the model itself, what were the hyperparameters? What are the input and output columns? And also, what are detailed data set about the model metadata? So what is that? So I'm opening a visualization on the metadata of this model. And I'm going to create a visualization with the ID and the parent ID. And here we go. Here's my decision tree. So if I uh, swap it in the right direction, and I'm going to add a few more parameters here, like confidence or the prediction uh, value as well, or the uh, condition column. So what are the conditions that make up each of these nodes? So this is a little bit uh, busy here, but what this means is that if I click on a node of my tree, for instance, the table will show me exactly what is the business condition that makes up that node. And if I climb up the tree like this, I will see exactly that this branch here has such a prediction in value and is made up of a set of conditions which you can see in the table. So I, as a business user, can easily make sense of the model that exists in OAC, apply it to my data, and see some of its metadata and its quality. And this is as easy as I'm showing you right now. So if I carry on here, let me go back to some of the slides. Oracle Analytics um, is a platform that merges various analytics needs across the organization, whether it's enterprise analytics and reporting, self-service visualization, or even augmented uh, uh, analytics, proactive analytics for the users. And because of this, it's actually very agile for, for all the users. And that's the important point in this slide, in my opinion. This solution addresses all or many different user profiles in the organization, from business users directly, or business analysts, to data scientists, to citizen data scientists, IT persons, or data engineers. And it lets them easily traverse the different analytics layers that you can see here in a single environment. And that provides them with a great business agility by jumping and crossing these different layers. This is the DNA of Oracle Analytics by blending all of these uh, different analytics needs together. Now, in that picture here, you can see machine learning. And machine learning is one of these important capabilities that I want to talk to you about today. Oracle Analytics machine learning enables all of these users, and in particular, enables analysts users and business users with an end-to-end -end codeless experience to design, test, and deploy machine learning models. So this is very powerful for me as an analyst when I can go through a cycle like the one you're seeing here, experience all of these steps, cycle through it, and put together a quickly a machine learning model that will enable analysts to get to um, machine learning value quickly, but it will also enable analysts and business users to collaborate and cooperate a lot more with real data scientists. So, to begin with, data sources and data loading. So Oracle Analytics provides with a variety of different connectors, data connectors of various types, whether they are relational data, multidimensional data, all sorts of connectors that allow users to bring data in Oracle Analytics, blend it together, slice it, dice it, analyze it, connect it with an enterprise data model, 
in the case of an enterprise deployment. Connect it with an application source, like a, uh, a cloud-based application, whether it is in the cloud or on-premise. So this is a, a very uh, high agility for users to bring across the, any kind of data that they're interested in. With this, Oracle Analytics also offers a very intuitive experience for end users to change, prepare, transform, and edit their data in many areas. There are automated enrichments of data that will pop up when data sets are being created in Oracle Analytics, pre uh, offering the users with suggestions on how they could enrich their data. But there's also a very powerful interface called DataFlow, which you see a picture here, where users can easily create a flow where they transform their data, join it, enrich it, build calculation, group it, do all sorts of transformation to get to the most pertinent business data for analysts. The people who know the business best were the most capable of getting to a pertinent data set for a given machine learning problem or business problem. Exploratory analysis, you've seen me click around and build a few charts within seconds here. Uh, this is only scratching the surface of OAC. OAC has dozens of visualizations out of the box. The interactiveness that I was showing you that comes by default with all this chart is actually very deep and allows to go into a, a lot more than what I've shown you. There is capability of calculations and advanced analytics preparations in analytics by a single right click, by building calculations directly, and there is a lot that is possible to slice, dice, visualize the data, and extract, and extract insights out of it very quickly. So as these steps gradually complete, it's actually very easy for an end user, an analyst user, to get into the model design, the machine learning model design and, and, and testing steps. So you've seen me consume existing machine learning models a moment ago. Now I want to show you how easy it was for me to build them in Oracle Analytics. And again, this is a, a code-free uh, experience that I'm going to show in the next demo. So, this is my homepage for analytics. And what we're going to do here is to create a data flow. So the data flow is this sequence of steps that I mentioned earlier on that we use for data preparation. Okay, so I'm going to create a data flow. And when I create a data flow, I select a data set. So I'm going to go with some insurance-based data set here, insurance customer data set, which is a database connected data set in my OAC. You can see the icon. When I select this, I will see various columns uh, uh, at the bottom here about uh, customer profiling on you know, age, marital status, ownerships, and all sorts of uh, insurance-related uh, attributes. And at the top here is my flow. I'm going to add a step to the flow. There are various steps. We'll come back to this in a minute. At the bottom here, I can see various um, machine learning steps, training, Numeric predictions, classifications, clusterings. And why don't we go and click on one here, like numeric predictions. And here are four different algorithms that I can click on and use. There are about 20 different algorithms out of the box in OAC. So these are for the numeric prediction. Let me actually go and click on a classification. So let's go with a binary classification, for instance. Here are a few other algorithms. So. Each of these algorithms will provide a training. So let's select a naive base, a training for a data set. And this is the experience for me. So basically, I can see several hyperparameters here that I have to select. And if I obviously select a different algorithm, chances are that the parameters will be different. But you can see that the UI is actually pretty simple for me. Now, here is a cart algorithm I've selected. Let's go and simply select a column. So let's say that we want to predict the propensity to buy an insurance. So that's a yes or no column. So it's a binary classification. And we're going to build a model that predicts this. And you know, I'm just going to change one parameter just for the sake of changing something. 
I'm going to make the maximum depth be six instead of five. That's it. That's as simple as it, as it is. It's completely declarative. And now I just give a name to this model. I'm going to call it buy insurance cart. And I run this data flow. And so I'm going to rename this data flow. So this is running on OAC and the crunching is happening on OAC. And this will take about a minute, but obviously in my video, I've trimmed down that timing and it completes. And I could actually, of course, do this, uh, uh, do other things while it's running. Now, in my machine learning tab, I see a, a, a buy insurance card model that we just created, which I can right click and see details about. So if I go and inspect here, I will see that, uh, what about quality on what we just did? Well, a model accuracy of 76% here. And here is a, a confusion matrix and a few more parameters on the quality of the model. Again, details information about what we just did in case somebody wants to look at it or re-understand. And again, the related models that you remember, that's when I went, that's where I went earlier on when I wanted to have some metadata about the tree. So if I quickly uh, visualize this one, this is what we just built uh, together here. Let's see if I do uh, ID and parent ID, the tree hopefully should be six level deep and one, two, three, four, five, six, that's what it is. Now, if I, you know, same deal here, right? So if I just build a table, I can easily click and understand which branches of the tree are using transaction ATM as a parameter or checking amount and so on. But what if I now want to tune and loop and, and, and refine this model? So what I've just done here is I open the data flow, the same data flow again, and guess what? I can come back there and change the parameters or even change the algorithm. So let me pick, for instance, a neural network this time. So we're going to build another model with neural network instead of cart, and then we will compare them. I just select the buy insurance, and this time, let's leave all these hyperparameters default as they are. And I'm just going to rename this. And you know what we could do? Since we're analysts, <clears throat> We know a little bit better about the business. We also want to influence what goes into that uh, model before it computes or before it trains. And I have selected here a step that is selecting columns so I can remove columns from my data set so that they don't get considered as potential features for the training. This is very easy. I just uh, remove the uh, uh, LTV, gender, uh, first and last name, which in my opinion, do not make sense for the, for the model. And I could rename, merge, I could aggregate calculate, um, numbers, or I could also add calculations. So I'm a business person, I like ratios. Let's build a ratio here that's like a house ownership, how many houses divided by a number of mortgages. You know, in my opinion, because of my business knowledge, I have an intuition that this is potentially going to influence the model. So we want to put it as an input to the model. And that's it. So we have enriched our data set with this calculation and it's going to feed the model training. Now, I want to show you one more thing before I train this. I have some customer asset data on an Excel file in my computer that I'm sure would help the model as well. If I just add data, click on the Excel file, I could join it here. I'll of course, I have to find a join. Here, I would use customer ID. So obviously, the data needs to have some level of consistency. But one is Excel. The other one is the database. We have to have consistency in this data, as I was saying. And then the join could be a, a full outer join, or we can control the join. So I'm not going to do this right here. I just wanted to highlight the fact that, look, uh, for me as an analyst, it's very easy to bring more pertinent data into this process and build a model that is really Re yielding correct or, or right results. So now this is running and here is our new machine learning model where we at. Here is our model, the N N1 we just created. Again, if we go and inspect quickly, I'm gonna see that, hey, this one has a much higher accuracy than the other one, for instance. So we did a good job. And again, for this one, we can see that uh, you know we have different data sets explaining its metadata because it's not the same type of model. That makes sense. But for an interest of time here, I'm gonna move on. And I want to show you one last thing. So we just created data uh, machine learning models. 
and I showed you earlier on how we could consume this within the context of a dashboard on the fly. But now I want to also apply this model on a larger data set. This is a different data set. And I want to apply this model to my data set as a batch. So here is a node that is apply model. And as I click on this node, I can select the models. So this is not in the context of a visualization. This is about a full data set. And what I see here at the bottom is actually let me select a different uh, uh, model because it may be simpler. Let me select the cart one. I see at the bottom, what are the columns that the model requires? You see input. And I see that they have all been mapped to some existing column in my data set automatically. I could override this, but this is happening automatically. And that's it. I'm just going to create a result data set here with basically my input data set and the scoring. And this is going to be batch. And once I have this resulting data set, so the scoring is going on right now on OAC, once I have this resulting data set, I can easily just go and visualize this. So I can't resist um, the fun to go and visualize a little bit of this. So this is my scored customer data set. And uh, I have my predicted value, my prediction confidence. And now I can, so I'm going to speed up a little bit with this, but I can uh, represent a count of customers by predicted yes, predicted no's. I can slice this basically by age and color. So I'm going to skip a few steps, but hey, this is an age representation of positive and negative predictions on propensity to buy. I can represent this as a stacked percent. Now we see that over age, the propensity to buy is increasing slightly. Now, how about we slice this by region and whatnot? So in a few minutes here, what I wanted to show you in this demo is we created data, um, machine learning models on our own data. We compared them. You saw me at the beginning applying, uh, uh, score, um, um, measuring the quality and comparing the models. And now we've applied one in a batch data set. So, that was uh, the model development and the model evaluation part where you have seen how easy it was for me as an analyst. Remember, I'm no data scientist myself, but this is really powerful for me because as an analyst, I am able to scratch the surface and build some machine, extract value from machine learning. Deploying is as easy as simply setting a permission to a model. So everyone who's watching this call could have access to my environment and go ahead and access the model if I had assigned the permission for you to use it against your own data set. So you could pretty much do the same apply steps that I've shown you so you have this scoring on your own data set. So to me, this is pretty powerful and pretty agile or pretty deep agility for business users to get into machine learning value. And the value that the benefit, the business benefit that an organization will get out of this is that a lot more people who may not have all the coding skills to use machine learning will now be able to understand, will now be able to draft and build some machine learning content. And for real problems that require data science, deep data science, business analysts may be in a position where they have a better collaboration with data scientists. And that's where the agility pays back because we all know that part of the cost of machine learning is the cycle that it takes in organization, the time, the time it takes. I want to end up with one last item, which is the agility here is not just about enabling business users to build models and apply them. The agility here is also to enable business users to consume, apply models that exist in data science platforms such as Oracle Machine Learning, basically the, the ADW, the Oracle Database Machine Learning. So where data scientists have built robust models, and you, you have seen some of these sessions in, in, in the event, built robust models in machine learning, in Oracle Machine Learning, OAC can simply register these models, make them look exactly as models that I've shown you, OAC models, 
and let users directly apply these models, leveraging the power of the database with all the work going on down in the database. So let me take a minute to demo this to you and that will conclude my presentation. So this is again, my OEC homepage. And earlier on, we went and created a data flow. This time here, we are going to start by registering a machine learning model that somebody else has already built for us in the database. So could be a data scientist, most likely. So I click on register model. And of course, I have to first find a database connection where this is. So I'm going to pick one database connection. This is a connection that is defined in OAC. It's simply a connection to a database. And here, I see a variety of different models that exist in this database. So these are the OML, Oracle Machine Learning Model, that Mark Hornick may have built on this database, or his team, or the data science team in your organization, and they have granted me visibility on. So I see one here that is class SVM. It's an SVM vector support vector machine model. And look, it's predicting the buy insurance thing as well, the value as well. So if I look at the details, I will see uh, what exactly is this doing in the database. This is still, this remains on the database. I'm just looking at what is there. Let's pick another one. It's uh, NB, naive base. Here we go, buy insurance. You know what? Let's use this one. I'm going to simply click register here. And what's going on now is that this model is registered in OAC. So if I go to machine learning, I now see the, the models that we had built a few minutes ago, but I also see this model that we registered. Nothing is happening on OAC here. It's simply a, a metadata saying that, hey, we know that this model exists in the database. We can do something with it if you want. Of course, if I go to inspect, I have all the usual you know, information sets such as details. So if I was granting access to this model, people could see related data sets explaining the metadata quality and so on. So now I'm going to create a data flow and I'm going to select my insurance data, which happens to be in the database where this model is. It's in the same database. And if I go and apply a model now, because it is in the same database, I can see that I have my class NB. Actually, I can see various models right there that are coming from the Oracle database. You can see here Oracle database. If you look a little bit at the bottom, you'll see Oracle analytics model. So these are different types of models. But I'm going to select one, which is the um, SVM goes uh, one, which is a database model. And here again, I can see this exact same experience and the columns that the model needs were mapped to the uh, database table that I'm using. So we're all cool. And we can see that outputs here are prediction and prediction probability. Okay. But I want to highlight one more thing. And this is specific to OML. There is an additional output field that you can see here, and you can see a lot of fields here. So this is really interesting for me as a business user. What we see here is two things. A block of fields calling prediction and probability two, three, four. This is a classification, and a classification could have different values. Yes or no in our case, or so one and two. This will provide me with the probability of each value of the classification into my OAC Result set. So this is pretty cool for me because I, I will understand not just the one that is 51%, but I will also understand the importance of the one that is maybe 43% and so on. So business-wise, I like that. That's very powerful. It's capability, obviously, of uh, um, Oracle machine learning. The second block of information is even more powerful, in my opinion. You can see here, attribute one weight, attribute one, attribute to one condition, and same for two, three, four, and five. For each record that is in our data set, the model, the OML model here will compute a, a, a scoring or a, a, a prediction, and it will also provide us with, for each record, what were the attributes that made up the prediction for that specific record. So this is different from model metadata, where we saw hey, a model is consuming all of these variables as features and inputs. 
Yes, that's interesting. This is different. This is for my own data. When I run the model for each record on, the, on my data, these are the specific attributes that make up the scoring. So this is specific to my own data. Now, what does that look like? So I'm just going to run that now, just save this as an output data set. And again, you can see that I know no SQL, I know no coding here, and I'm just running a pretty complex machine learning model on the database on my data, and I'll get a lot of different outputs. So here are the data sets that were created by this data flow. So these are the scored outputs. So I'm going to open one of these data set. And we can see that we have all the columns, so customer ID. And if I scroll up to the top, I have prediction and prediction probability. So this is pretty classic. But I also see all of these attribute one, attribute two that I clicked on when I ran the data flow. So let me fast forward to a visualization that has all of these attributes just to save time on the demo. So you see customer ID, prediction, prediction probability, first columns. And notice for each customer here, for each ID in my data, there is a set of attribute weight and condition that gives me what is the most important attribute for customer number one, what is the second important attribute for customer number one, and the third one and on like this up until five. So now I know for everyone in my data set that the number of children or the profession or the marital status or the state or what exactly drove this population to getting this score in my model and what is the probability for this. So needless to say that at this point, I can build all sorts of aggregations and visualizations to understand how the model behaves on my data and what in my data is driving the prediction so I can take business action. So let me fast forward to another visualization here. Look, I have built, you know, across my data set here, what are the most across my data set? So all my customers, what are the most important attributes that make up the results? And I could filter this for yes or no, but in this case, I didn't. Profession, transaction ATM, what, and, and marital status. And then if I look at the second chart, what are the most important second attributes, uh, the red charts? And then the blue one is what are the, the third important attributes? So by looking at this, I can understand, and, and this result may be different on your own data, but for me, this is telling me what I have to influence and what I have to pay attention to. Now, if I... If I use my little filtering trick, look, if I look at only the Northeast in my data set, well, these results are different. If I look at the Midwest, these results are different again. So the different profile of my records is driving the model to get different results for different reasons. And I can get the explanation, the custom tailored explanation to my own data of why this machine learning model in the database has scored it this way. For me, this is a very important process to understand and explain, not only understand and explain the scores and the values of the model, but also uh, to, to drive business value immediately by taking action on this. Now, I understand if this model is correct, these are the, par the parameters I should worry about in my business to create a, a propensity to buy for insurance. Again, no technicals here, just plain and simple UI. Um, friendly UI that I, as an analyst, was able to, to, to use and leverage. So what, you, what, what I wanted to share with you in that past half hour was uh, OAC is not only a solution to just visualize and understand data and slice it and dice it. It's great at this, but it's a lot more than this. It actually covers different analytics parts in an organization, among which machine learning. And in that machine learning part, there's a whole universe that is friendly to business analysts, that is useful for data scientists, that lets people who may not have all the coding and technical skills, let them go and extract some value out of machine learning, design some machine learning content, apply some machine learning content, and eventually make a ton of value of machine learning models that may have been designed in OML by applying and understanding 
how they work. In my opinion, this is great agility that will deliver a great business value in many organizations. Thank you very much for your time.